This is episode 77. G'day and welcome to the My Voice Notes series. This series came about because of you. So thank you. I was receiving feedback on how you enjoy the realness and rawness of my show and that you connect with my stories and experiences. So I decided to bite my fear on the bum and share with you my most personal series yet. I spend a lot of time reflecting and I usually record my thoughts in my phone, sort of like a journal. And now you will have access to that. Please leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts if you enjoy this series because my intention is to inspire you to break free of anything that holds you back and to know that you are not alone. All right, buckle up. Here we go. Hello, beautiful people, and thank you for joining me for another show This show is dedicated to all of my fellow single people out there, (laughs) especially the single women out there in their 30s, because I've been having many discussions with some other single 30-year-olds about the same topic. And that topic is, why does everyone constantly ask us why we're single? It's such a rude question. (laughs) Because I've been on the receiving end and it doesn't bother me too much. I'm happy to engage in the conversation, but I've had some friends that are energetically charged (laughs) with this question. And it's because like, what response do they want to hear? Imagine someone asking you, why are you still single? It's just a weird question to answer. Like the woman is at fault for being single and I thought today would be a great topic to debunk this and share my reflections of my voice notes because actually right after right before I recorded my voice notes someone asked me about my relationship or a lack of I should say (laughs) and then I was speaking with a girlfriend who was mentioning that, uh, you know, she had met up with friends and she was going out each weekend to try to meet people and because she's feeling the pressure. She's feeling the pressure of being single in your 30s and I gave her a nice big hug over the phone and told her that everything is going to work out. She just has to believe it. So what I'll do is I'll play my recording and then at the end of that recording, I will offer a few things that you can say when somebody asks you why you're still single. In my voice recording, I go through why the people are asking in the first place and it could be a bunch of reasons. They could possibly just really, really care about you and they might think that you're sad and lonely (laughs) for those of you that are like me you love your alone time and you're always happy because you can do whatever you like (laughs) and another reason why people ask is just because of life conditioning just how they were brought up you're supposed to be married you're supposed to have kids you're supposed to have all the things and The third thing was, I can't actually remember, so you'll just have to listen along. Now, ideally, we live in a society nowadays that being single is perfectly acceptable. And I think that we should keep paving the way for a single positivity movement instead of a single negativity movement. And... For those of you that are the people that always ask someone, why aren't you in a relationship? Maybe to consider reframing the question and to actually think about what are you really asking when you ask that? Is there a fear? Is it genuine care? Is it, what is it that you're actually asking? Because 
asking someone why they're single is just a really hard question to answer without feeling humiliated or shamed in some way or like a failure. All right, here we go. One of the most common things I get asked is, Helen, are you still single? Helen, are you seeing someone? When are you going to get married? Hurry up, it's time to have children. And it's never really from single people. It's mainly from people that are married or people that are in a relationship and have children. And I've been reflecting on it to see why some people are so invested because it's always the same people asking every single time that I see them. And so I started doing a little bit of my own research and asking questions about their relationship to see why they're invested in my status so much. And what I discovered was truly remarkable. If you find yourself invested in someone else's relationship status, this is also something that might be really good for you to become curious about because it may even help improve your relationship. The number one thing is feeling like you might have rushed into your relationship or your marriage or maybe feeling like you settled. And the reason that you are invested in someone else's single life or um, lack of relationship or if they're not married or if they don't have kids yet is because maybe you realize that you also had time and you didn't need to rush into becoming married or having children. And I find that a lot, especially with women. You know, I'm 38, 39 this year and I have no doubt in my mind that I will have children and I will have a lifelong partner. Um, I have no doubt. It's a lot of other people that have doubt and that was one of the most interesting things that I discovered was some people feel like they also would have had time had they not felt so pressured to rush into a relationship that showed red flags from the start and ultimately leaving you in a relationship where you feel dissatisfied or unfulfilled. The other thing that I discovered was that people that are unhappy in their relationships ask a lot, um, or people that don't have the relationship of my dreams, <laughs> you know, the one in my opinion which I am manifesting to create and when you're dissatisfied with your relationship it can make you invest in someone else's personal life and someone else's relationship status and you know something to do if you are unfulfilled in your relationship or dissatisfied is to really start to focus on it more and to really put more energy uh, into rebuilding and igniting that spark again and making sure that every single day is one where you live in gratitude of your partner and one where they live in gratitude of you every single day. I have 100% faith that relationships can be beautiful every single day and all it does is requires a little bit of effort. And I have a beautiful relationship saver document that I'll link to here in the show notes that you can get your little hands on to make sure that you're also doing the steps that you should be doing to participate in your relationship to make it the best one of your life. And the third thing that I reflected upon 
with worrying so much about someone else's relationship status <laughs> uh, is that conditioning, a conditioning of, you know, many, many years ago where we were told that we should just get married and have kids young. And that conditioning is just so ingrained that it's odd to see a 38-year-old woman that's not married or uh, have kids. That might seem odd to you, but let me tell you, it's actually one of the best things. And I intentionally made sure that I left my 20s for exploration and my 30s for my career so that in my 40s I could just spend time with my little babies. So thank you to everybody that has invested in my relationship status. I really appreciate you for caring and wanting to know why I am single. And I hope that this has now provided an opportunity for you to see why you're so interested in someone else's relationship status. We women that are single at my age are happy. Um, and, you know, there's got to, there might be some women at my age that are not happy. And if that is you and you're listening today and you feel like, oh, my gosh, pressure, I'm getting older, my clock's ticking, then definitely work with a coach or someone that can help you to manifest the relationship of your dreams because I have, again, no doubt that it can happen for everyone if you really, really want it to. Have a little faith in me. <laughs> oh, I hope you found that insightful. You know, you could always sing that song to whoever's asking you these questions. <laughs> I think a sense of humor goes a long way with a topic like this. And I know it's touchy because it can trigger both sides of the party for various different reasons. And if you are feeling triggered, go back three episodes to one with Kate Crow and it's called Triggers Are Your Wake Up Call because every trigger is a little doorbell saying, hey... There's something here that uh, energetically charges you. Maybe you should figure out what that is. All right, so let me offer you a few ways to handle a situation like this. Uh, if somebody asks you, why are you not in a relationship? Why aren't you married? Why don't you have kids? One way that you could respond is a simple, can you tell me what you mean? And then at least that way, you can get some clarification and about what they're really asking and the person asking can also be a little bit more specific with that question and remembering that asking someone why they're single could feel like a compliment for the person that is asking you it could be a way that they are expressing that they think you're great and thought that it was obvious that someone would be with you you'd be in a romantic relationship but sometimes sometimes they say it with an inclination that you're failing in some way and that is what I don't like <laughs> and that is when someone is just being rude but also remember that that question can stem deep from an ingrained value that tie in with a person's worth and stability to their relationship. And let me tell you, we are better than that. We don't need to be with someone. <laughs> Our worth doesn't change whether we're in a relationship or we're not. Our stability doesn't change whether we're with a person or not those are things that you need to work on yourself if you are having uh, self-worth or stability issues number two is a simple response that's a bit rude or that's a bit intrusive or I find that intrusive or that's a little bit personal 
And this is a way just to quickly shut down the whole conversation. And if the person you're talking with continues to ask the same question, you just continue to say the same response until that person realizes, oh, maybe she's not happy with me asking this question. You know, my niece called me the other day and she said to me, "Um, auntie, she's seven, why aren't you married yet? (laughs) And I said, what does that mean if I married? And obviously she didn't know what to say, but I'd love to to just challenge her thinking so that she knows that being married doesn't identify you as a person. And I reassured her that I am very happy and that I might get married one day soon and I might have children. And I told her that it is okay for people not to be married. And it was just a new, a new thought for her. So that is how young we start to get ingrained with that whole thought. So don't feel too bad when people ask you this question. But I know it can be sensitive, especially if you're feeling pressure. I'm with you, girl. I am with you. Another way you could respond to this question, especially if marriage and kids isn't on the cards for you, is something like, That's not a priority for me at the moment. And hopefully if the person you're engaging with is cluey enough, that will direct the conversation towards your priorities at the moment. And if not, then you take the lead and you move it towards your priorities so that that way you can move on from that conversation. As you can hear, those of you listening, this is a really boring conversation for us and... (laughs) It happens a lot. That's why I am recording this podcast. Another great way to respond is I, I'm not currently looking for anyone at the moment or I'm not interested in anyone at the moment. And sometimes what happens is they have someone in line for you <laughs> or someone that they want to hook you up with. And if you're down for it, then whatever. And if you're not down for it, then just repeat that you're not interested in a relationship at the moment. You don't have to go into too much detail. It really is no one's business. Another great response that I really love is, is it bad to be single? Or what's wrong with being single? Or am I less of a woman being single? Is there something wrong with being single? That sort of a angle. And their response will give you a direct analysis to what their fears are when it comes to being single. The nice way to respond would be a no. But if someone says yes, you know, there is something wrong with being single, then you probably know that both of you are on different wavelengths and it's a really great idea just to step away from the conversation. It's so sad that people love to intrude so much and make you feel uncomfortable. I've walked away from many conversations or I have intentionally stayed away from the people that I know love to ask that question every single time. And for those of you listening that have found yourself guilty of this question, you know, you probably didn't even realize that it could be an issue for single women. But something that you could offer instead of why are you single, why aren't you married and why don't you have children (laughs) is something like what are things that you like about being single or talk to me about your single life. I have some beautiful friends that are like, tell us all about your life because they're at home with children, with a husband, they're tired, they're exhausted, and they love to hear about my adventures and try to like relive that single life. And that's what good friends and true friends ask. A lot of my friends (laughs) are unhappily married. And they say to me, Helen, stay single as long as you can. 
And I am so grateful for them because I got to witness firsthand the ins and outs of a marriage, of a committed relationship, of children in a relationship, of being a single mum and all of the stuff. So I just feel so blessed that I have a wide scope of different sort of relationships that I can draw experience upon. Another way to respond especially if you've just maybe come out of a relationship or if you're still healing from a relationship is just to be brutally honest and say I'm still getting over my last relationship and you know dating someone right now scares me another answer (laughs) makes me laugh all the time is why not (laughs) And this is another great way to just quickly shut down the conversation. And I've done this before when I've noticed people are asking for the reasons of looking at you like you're a failure of some sort. Um, Don't ever be afraid to walk away from a conversation that isn't serving you. I love doing that because I think it's really, really beneficial to assert your boundaries and force your boundaries and make sure that people know that they have crossed a boundary and the last way to respond is with a simple because I am or just a blank stare and just see what happens make it awkward and then walk away, excuse yourself, say that you're going to go have a drink or go and polish your shoes or whatever it is. <laughs> so some final thoughts. Look, you, you can't control whether you're single or not. Sometimes you can, like if you really want to be single, which is amazing and all good. My advice is just be open when people ask you that before you respond just take a a deep breath it's okay if you have that pause in between the question and the answer and just maybe ask yourself if you're starting to get emotionally charged with anger or whatever emotion it is frustration just ask yourself what is it that I need right now do you need this conversation to end do you need to find a way to put your words together Uh, do you need your friend close by (laughs) what do you need in this situation and definitely feel free to use any of those responses that I just mentioned it might be wise to write them down or put them in your notes so that you don't forget next time you get asked but yeah for me now it's just second nature I don't mind at all when people ask me how are you still single why don't you have kids yet what are you waiting for? (laughs) It's just a little sad that people don't ask, you know, the deeper question, like, what are you working towards? What's your goals? What's your dreams? What's your vision? And that is a much better question to ask. And be kind, be gentle. Remember that everybody is going through something Don't take things personally, don't make assumptions, but definitely use your intuition and your gut instinct to navigate through heavy, uncomfortable, annoying conversations like this. Hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Leave me a review on Apple Podcasts and let me know what you think or even head over to my Instagram, which is Helen underscore Yuskovic. I'll put a link in the show notes or at whole health, H-O-L underscore health. Let me know if there is anything else you would love for me to reflect on. I love these episodes. I have so many coming up and shout out to all my single folk out there. If this episode has been a total eye opener for you and you feel like, OMG, I think I have done my friend's head in. By the amount of times I've asked, just give her a call or text her and say, hey friend, I just listened to this podcast and I ask you a lot if why you're still single and why you don't have kids and I didn't realize that 
it might be coming across rude. So I just want to give you a beautiful bestie hug and say I'm sorry and offer whatever it is that you just found out about yourself in this episode. Until next time, friends, I'm sending you truckloads of love, power and joy. Bye for now.